So, Rick, um, what are the critical factors, would you say, in creating a winning hockey team? Uh, number one is you need very good players. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, you, uh, so, so yeah, you, you need talent and you need depth of talent. Um, but, uh, of course, uh, if you don't have that, then you have to build those players, improve them, develop them, and continuously improve the group. So you need gifted players. I think you need real definition about how you go about uh, your task. Mm -hmm. They need uh, to understand exactly what their roles are. And, and um, I think you also have to be true to uh, the culture. I mean, in Australia, we play away, which is different to Korea, different to India, different to uh, Germany. And, and, and But it's, it, it suits our uh, way of playing. I think also what I try to do is is to uh, to fashion the way of playing to the gifts of the players rather than to get the players to uh, fit to a particular formula. And I think that is important. Then in the end, all of the important decisions and judgments that are made in the game are made by the players. So you have to spend your time preparing them to make those decisions and judgments. And that's a continuous iterative process that goes on and on. You, you try something, you review it, you, you improve it, you try it again, and, and that, that's a continuous process. Okay. Um, at the moment, the Australian team, we, we don't have a specialist strike flicker in the current team, which is here in, in the Aslan Shah. How important is it to a team in the modern game to have a specialist drag flicker? Well, as long as the corners are as they are, then uh, it's, it's an important part of it. I'm sure you could still win without it, but we actually... Uh, we actually have a, a range of people who can do that job, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the teams are trying to do so. If you have someone who's special in the group, then that uh, adds to uh, what you can do. Um, so it, it's an important part of it, but um, you uh, you have to balance that against the people who, who do that role, being competent, quality field players, and that's always a balancing act that every coach is uh, dealing with. Yeah. I think the rule at the moment is uh, is not good for hockey because it gives too much emphasis to a very narrow closed skill. Yeah. It would be better if we had a different sort of corner without the danger and all of the things that go along with the present corner. We're trying something different in Australia at the moment for our National Hockey League. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, player selection. How do you, let's say you have two players of similar ability. How do you select one over the other? Well, I, I, I think you always are doing, in selection, you are doing a calculus, and the calculus is what are the benefits and what are the costs of this player, what yep. do they bring to the team, what things perhaps do the others bring, and you have to make that calculation. And uh, that's the case that always is, occurs with selection. But you also have to have a balanced team, and in the end, when it comes to selecting the last few players for your team, it's the balance of the group and their flexibility and the, all of the things that they offer that perhaps are different. Sometimes it's a set play skill that sets a play apart. Sometimes yeah. it's, uh, it's the versatility that sets them apart. Sometimes they have a special quality that, that you think you need in the team. Um, and, and so uh, you are always doing those sorts of calculations. But in the end, maybe for mm -hmm. the final one or two selections, then uh, versatility and flexibility are important factors too. Okay. So how do you, uh, how do you go about motivating the individuals? I think uh, you treat them uh, as individuals, you give them feedback that is uh, specific to uh, their task, mm. you, you always put in front of them uh, um, challenges that are important for them to, to uh, approach and reach that, that, that will stretch them and, and ask them to be better than they presently are. Um, those are important things, but you also uh, provide encouragement and lots of feedback. Okay, talking about the encouragement and feedback now, um, how do you criticise a player? I use the word criticise, not necessarily to mean criticise, but to say, how do you then, something's gone wrong, you've got to then translate that to the player and correct that behaviour. Well, you have to be direct about that. You, you, there are expectations for the team, and the team has, uh, has expectations. So they, they let down their teammates, they have to understand that. They let down the group if they are able to fulfil their roles. Yep. You always hopefully give them a way of uh, improving though and uh, you, you set at the same time that you might be critical, you set a, a, an agenda for improvement. Yeah, we used to see very specific roles within teams. 
uh, defence, midfield, attack. Now we have this more or less an all-round player. Uh, certainly within the Australian team we see this more than perhaps in some of the other teams. How do you develop that all-round player? Well, you expect the athletes to be able to be all-round players and I think oh. they, you know, if you only listen to what Jose Brazo has been saying to his uh, Indian players, how they have to be more mm -hmm. undifferentiated if you like. And we have been doing that now for a couple of decades in Australia and we are looking increasingly for players who have flexibility and who are able to play all around the pitch. In the end, we need a pitch full of people like that, but you still need someone to be able to score the goal and somebody to be able to defend the goal. And so the, there is a different emphasis, but there is much more flexibility. The only way you do that is by actually asking them to do it, okay. putting them in those situations and actually having them experience it, practice it, learn it. We see on the attacking short corner that's reviewed constantly during the game. The instructions are sent out onto the field as to which short corner to take uh, in the attacking short corner. On the defending short corner, what are the critical factors and do you review those during the game? Of course you do and you know what the other team's likely to do and you're watching them. And, and yeah, I suppose you use uh, you know, uh, intuitive logic with what's happened in the past. It yeah. maybe will repeat itself but you have to always be aware that teams can change and they have, uh, they have different strategies and depending on the situation in the game, different things will, uh, will occur. But always the players are making judgments about uh, what they have seen, what, what has occurred and what is likely to occur. Sometimes yeah. that's best guess, play the percentages, that's how you have to do it. But those corner situations are critical, that's why, hmm. um, for instance in this uh, in Aslan Shah tournament, it's critical that you have to get those umpiring decisions correct for those decisions for those uh, events because uh, and I think that's why the video replay is important in our game because those events are so critical there's so few of them yeah. you have to get them right yeah um, dealing on an individual basis when a player receives the ball what's the first thing he should do uh, it, it happens before he receives the ball before he receives the ball he has to know well, what the options are ahead of him he has to know what is around him and what the situation of the game is and what the <laughs> possibilities are and he has to make a calculation, you know, that I have a 100% pass there which gives me no gain or I have a, a 30 or 40% pass which might give me a goal shot. Yeah, so he's making a calculation about where the ball should go and depending on a whole range of factors in the game, mm -hmm. um, he, he has to decide what he'll do. But a lot of that happens before he receives the ball. When he receives the ball, yeah, we want him to be able to see where he's going. And uh, the capacity to receive the ball well is a critical part of the modern game. Yeah. Do you have any rules about when a player should actually run at the defence or pass the ball? Yeah, we have general rules, yeah. but in the end, uh, at this level, these players, they have flexibility to, uh, to uh, use their judgement. And as I said earlier, the, the most important things that happen in the game are the players making judgments and decisions, not, not the coaches. Yeah. Okay, final question, uh, just for this part of the interview. If you could change one rule, and I think you alluded to something before, what would it be? Oh, the, the, the penalty corner. Yeah. I, I would, I would, I would improve the penalty corner, make it, make it into a field play situation. Yeah. Um, with a, with a, it would still be called a penalty corner and have the same, um, uh, if you like, importance in the in the match. Yeah. Because it's a foul in a circle that, that causes it, or a foul in the 25 that causes it. The other thing I would do is I, I would bring back the long corner. Yeah. Stop teams pushing the ball over the back line. This is dumbed down defending, and yeah. it's crazy. In this tournament, we've had one corner given to the ball being deliberately pushed over the back line. Yeah. I think I've seen it 30 times. Yeah. And, and so if you brought back a long corner where maybe there were five on the goal line and the ball had to go out to the 25, teams yeah. wouldn't knock the ball over the back line anymore. And, and that would be better for the game. Yeah. Okay, cool one. That'll do us for now.